Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. I hope I've got Brother Jeff back here somewhere, maybe still, who's going to help me get some PowerPoint going. We're a little handicapped out here today that uh, I think maybe the storm didn't uh, fare extremely well with the computer system, but he's going to try to help me get the PowerPoint going and uh, see if we can use it anyway today. We're going to try to limp through it. So again, it is a pleasure to be with you this morning. I appreciate the opportunity. Alan and Olivia uh, send their regards. They were hoping to make it here this morning too. But uh, any of you that have had children in your life before, as, as many times you know, when one gets sick, they spread it right on down the line. So they're dealing with some of that with their children today and decided not to share with you guys. So I'm sure you'll appreciate that too. Our lesson topic this morning is the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is one of those things that is very deceiving sometimes in our mind of how we think about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. So one of the first things that, you know, I come to about the Holy Spirit is sometimes when you just try to describe the Holy Spirit, you're like, well, you're not sure if that's a he, she, it, the, uh, much less how the Holy Spirit works um, is extremely complicated. but one of the things that we don't want to recognize that there is a difference in the Holy Spirit and the Lord answering prayers. Those are not the same thing. So the Holy Spirit does work in our lives to give us gift a gift. Whereas many of us know when we're baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, also being baptized gives you another perk that you do get the ear of the Lord. So those are not the same things. Um, so getting the ear of the Lord and the Lord will answer prayers in our lives that we make petitions to the Lord, that's not what we're talking about today. That's different. So we're talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit that we would get as being a baptized Christian. So as I begin to look into the topic, some of the first usage that I found of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit being introduced to us into the Bible is right in the beginning. It starts right in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. It says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So the Spirit of God is also would be known as the Holy Spirit. They are mutually part of the same whole, that you have a trinity there. You've got God, you've got the Holy Spirit, you've got Christ. And although we have difficulty many times relating how three are one, we do know that they all three share um, kind of an omnipotent spirit that they have there, that the Spirit of God would be the Holy Spirit. So the first time that I found that the Bible that I could find really mentioned it as the Holy Spirit was in Psalms 51. It says, Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Which also kind of gives a little bit of reference to that your Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God could be the same, that they would going to be interchangeable in the words that are being used in those two references. Um, also, as we're going to pick up on a little later on, it mentions about that there in Genesis 2 that the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. We're going to see that hovering repeated a little later as we get into that, that the Spirit uh, is known to hover. So one of the uncommon knowledge things that we have about the Holy Spirit uh, that is not that it's not in the Bible, but it's just not thought about very much, um, is that the Holy Spirit is the one that is given reference to here in the Bible that um, gave life to Christ in the womb. So it says in Matthew 1.18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to jo Joseph before they came together. He was found with child of the Holy Spirit. 
So it's not uncommon that you would think that a miraculous birth of a virgin, Mary, would also come with a miraculous development of how that conception came to place. Well, that was through the Holy Spirit of God made that intervention of those things happen, that that took place, that Christ was found to be in the womb of Mary. So that was one of the things that would be contributed to the Holy Spirit. So for our next one here is one that me and my daughter Nancy got into a little bit of discussion some years back about is that one of the sins that is an unpardonable sin is that of speaking blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not just a feeling. The Holy Spirit is a real entity of the Godhead. So the Bible tells us that speaking against the Holy Spirit is an unforgivable offense. So with looking into that on some of the studies that I've done, I found that that is probably based on the verses in which that is being used about the Holy Spirit. It's probably a very hard thing, if not near impossible, to recreate that you could create that sin. So at the time that this sin took place, you have in the discussion here of Matthew chapter 12 and in Mark, that account that Jesus Christ is using the miracles that have been granted to him by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is helping him to do a miracle through the Holy Spirit of God. And the crowd around him and those of the pharaohs and the Sadducees and the people around him try to claim that Christ is doing those miraculous gifts by the devil, by Satan. So that was blasphemy against the Holy Spirit that those gifts were being done in a miraculous way by God. They were being done by Satan himself. Now, to recreate a scenario where that could happen is impossible. You cannot do miraculous gifts any longer. So the time of me standing up and saying, I'm going to do a miraculous gift by the Holy Spirit, you can't do that. So it seems like it would be pretty hard to recreate that same sin. The closest that I found that you could get to that might be that the Bible, as we're going to talk a little bit more, is one of the works, I believe, of the Holy Spirit. If you tried to claim that the Bible was not something of a gift of the Holy Spirit, and you tried to claim that this is actually the work of Satan, then you might come as close possible to recreating that particular sin that is being done there. So, for our next slide that we've got here, is. It's difficult to put in our heads what the Holy Spirit would look like. You know, we have some representation of what Christ would look like because He came to earth. He took on the form of a man. Um, but when it comes to God and the Holy Spirit, those are such mysterious forces. And I hear a lot of people say, you know, many, many times I've heard people say, well, the Holy Spirit led me to do that. The Holy Spirit, you know, helped me to do that. Well, that's, I feel like, our mind struggling to put some type of a form that we can comprehend to the Holy Spirit. So in Luke chapter 3, verse 22, it says that the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. So in this case, we have Christ is being baptized, and as Christ comes up out of the water of baptism, that he has completed something that was a command of God. He's showing us an example of what we're to do. That we see that the Holy Spirit descends basically above Christ, and a voice is heard that says that he's, that, you know, God is pleased. 
Well, that could present itself in a couple of different ways. It says, descended in bodily form like a dove. So, that could be a literal dove in bodily form. So, a lot of times you see that representation used of a dove that might represent holy things. We know a dove was sent out from um, the ark that, um, you know, we have that representation of things. We also have of the Holy Spirit, as we looked at there in first in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Holy Spirit hovering over the face of the earth. Um, so another way that you might could do something like that is, you know, a dove representation might be bodily form and representation of like a dove. We don't know for sure how that presented itself. I think that... Um, if a true person had have been seen over the body of Christ, um, that might have gotten more notoriety uh, throughout history than what the Bible says. I think that uh, it may have been more of like a literal dove um, that was descended at that point. So, moving on to our next slide here. Um, what are some of the things that the Holy Spirit does do? What are the ways the Holy Spirit does interact in our lives? Well, one of the things that we know is that the Holy Spirit gives knowledge. I think this is one of the starting points of the Holy Spirit, of things that the Holy Spirit is interested in, and that's knowledge. So in Luke chapter 1, we saw that Zacchaeus, um, Zacharias was given knowledge, as well as in Luke Chapter 2, Simon um, wanted the, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit and that knowledge was granted to these men through the Holy Spirit. It says in Luke 2, 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. So, we know that the Holy Spirit was with Simon, and he granted him the knowledge of that he would see Christ before he saw death. So, we can tell there that the Holy Spirit does grant knowledge uh, as one of the things that the Holy Spirit is capable of doing. So, our next slide, we can see here that the Holy Spirit brings comfort to us. One of the things that was a big thing that Christ had told his apostles in John 14, 26, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Well, what's he teaching them? Knowledge. He's teaching them with knowledge. He's to be a helper to them. So that is going to be a great comfort to them in the knowledge that when Christ leaves and descends back into heaven, that they're not to fear, that someone is going to be sent to be a helper to them to bring them knowledge of things that they had learned while Christ was here. So our next slide, we see what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is. So. The purpose of the Holy Spirit, while the Holy Spirit may in today's world, we don't know that the Holy Spirit does not help to make prayers come true, but the Bible doesn't give us an indication that the Holy Spirit is working to make prayers come true and to lead you down certain paths. So the Holy Spirit, at the time that the Holy Spirit came to be a helper, the big purpose of the Holy Spirit was to help the apostles have an undeniable credibility that the physical proof of Christ was credible and real and that you could believe that this was the Christ. He was the one. So the Holy Spirit helped them do that through miraculous gifts and those things were being passed on by the apostles to other people. 
So it says in Acts 1.8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Well, we're at one of those ends of the earth. From where they were at, we're about as far away from there as you can get. And we're as far away from there removed as you can get from time. And those miracles are still recorded to help us believe. So that was a big purpose of the Holy Spirit. Another thing of the Holy Spirit that we see in our next slide here is the laying on of hands. So in Acts 8.14, Simon, he wanted to buy this ability. He was a sorcerer. He was a magician. He wanted this so that he could make it part of his act that he could probably make money off of this. So, we also do see in Acts 19 that the apostles gave people the Holy Spirit. And when Paul had laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So, this was a gift that was able to be passed on by the apostles. Now, those people did not have the ability to continue to pass on that gift. So, as those people began to die out, then those things died out with them. Now, it's my personal belief here that the main purpose of the Holy Spirit has been completed. It was a task by God. So just like Christ had a task that was appointed Him by God, that was to come to the earth, to go to the cross, to set up a means of reconciliation by us back to God that we could, through baptism, through the blood of Christ, be reconciled to God for our sins. That was a task that has been completed by Christ. And you can get that, and it is available to us today. I believe that the Holy Spirit had a task just like that. The Holy Spirit came as a helper to the apostles and to those that the apostles laid hands on. and help them produce those miracles to help people believe. It also helped the apostles get the written word established. And they helped the apostles, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, give the written word. Now that task is completed. If you take advantage of that gift to us through the Holy Spirit, it comes with a lot of gifts for us, as we'll see in the next slides. So, the gift of the Holy Spirit today, then Peter said to them, repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Well, that's part of us. We're the far off. So in our next slide here, we'll see a little bit more about those that gift that we've been promised. It says in Ephesians 5, 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, walking as children of God. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Now these are things that I believe the Scriptures give to us. They give to us truth. They teach us righteousness. They teach us goodness. And if you follow those gifts, it is guaranteed that those gifts will make your life better. As we see in the next slide here, I've labeled that there's about 11 gifts that we get through the Holy Spirit. That we get today in Galatians 5, it says, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And then we add back in the righteousness and the truth that we just read about that we get from the Holy Spirit. That gives us 11 different byproducts of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, these are not literal gifts that like on your birthday, the Holy Spirit brings you a package. And He leads you some way to a package that you're going to find on your front porch. No. If you 
indulge in the truth of the Holy Spirit, these are byproducts that you get from the gift of the Holy Spirit, that these things become part of your life through study and understanding of the truth. And they continue to make your life better as you build upon those things and you build upon those gifts. So on our next slide, the greatest of these gifts is label. So I feel like that this one is a catalyst that if you do not have this greatest gift, then the other gifts begin to fall apart. In Matthew 22, it says that Jesus is asked, which is the greatest commandment, great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That makes a trinity of things, almost like the trinity of Christ. You've got your heart that that has to be with, your soul that that has to be with, and your mind that that has to be with. Those things are a trinity within us, almost like the trinity of the Godhead. That if you do not start with the premise of love in those three categories, they don't spread through the other areas. So, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Everything hangs on those two commandments, starting with love. And everything else branches out from that point. So, our next slide, we're going to see here that our gifts are better than those of the apostles, so they say. In 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 1, it says, this is a person who has miraculous gifts, telling us, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all goodness to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. This is an apostle who had all power bestowed upon him through the literal Holy Spirit could help him remove Pilate Mountain from existence. And he says, without love, starting this, it is of no value whatsoever. That love is definitely our greatest point. So, in our next slide here, we see those things, they're part of our 11 gifts. And I've interjected some of our gifts that go along with reading this same scripture. You can take a look at these as we read through there. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Then it must be gentle. Does not seek its own. It must have self-control. It does not provoke. It must think of peace. Thinks no evil. Then it must be a thinking about righteousness. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love, it bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. And love endures all things because of the faithfulness of the one that the love comes through. And that is our Lord and Savior who showed us that through sending His Son to die for us. This leads us to about the close of our lesson here. On our next slide, we have some wonderful gifts, but are we using those gifts? In Matthew 25, his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of our Lord. You have 11 gifts that you have access to. Are you a good and faithful servant to use them? Or 
There's the other option. But the Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reaped where I have not sown and gathered whether I have not scattered where I have not scattered seed. Are you using any of those 11 talents and gifts that we've been given? Our last slide here hopefully brings it home. Are you sharing those gifts? What starts with love and knowledge is meant to be shared through love and knowledge. So, he says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Now, I would almost guarantee you every person sitting here has a loved one that falls into he who does not believe will be condemned. You've got an opportunity while they're alive to share our gifts. But if you don't share them, they will be condemned. Some people fear that if they say the gospel to somebody in some way, they might drive them away. But you know, if you don't say the gospel at all, what's the difference? If you get the gospel in the best, easiest, most loving way presented to you, that's great. Hallelujah to him who delivered it. But if you get the gospel delivered to you in the worst, most hateful possible way out there, all of us are still commanded that on Sunday we worship the Lord. Share the gift. We'll try to do it in the best way possible through the love of the gifts that we have and the knowledge of the scriptures that we have, but whether you can do it great, mediocre, or horribly, share the gift. If the gift doesn't get known, then shame on us that we kept that to ourselves. If there's anyone here, though, this morning that has not been using their gift, they've not been sharing their gift, they've strayed away from that, if you would like to begin the journey, of having those gifts in your life. Now's the opportunity. Now's the time. And as we stand and sing the song that Brother Aaron has chosen for us, now's your time to come.